All right, in this video, we'll look at problem number, an example like problem number four on your homework in section 1.6. All right, this example here involves a couple of radicals here. All right, remember, this is a miscellaneous equation. We got to figure out how to get our x from being kind of like stuck. All right, and one of the things that I want to see here is that both of my terms here have x under a radical. In order for me to get rid of a radical, one method I can use is to square both sides. So I'm going to square both sides, raise both sides to the second power. And one thing that we're going to have to remember here, <coughs> excuse me, is that when we square an expression that looks like this, we got to remember to sort of use our FOIL method. And so I get an expression that looks like that. I'm going to multiply these two things that right there. When you multiply two things that are under a square root by each other, <clears throat> your square roots cancel. And so I have an x plus 6. Here, I'm going to have a square root of x plus 6 times the square root of x minus 1. I'm going to have, sorry, that should be a plus, plus the same thing, right? I have an x plus 1, minus 1 here, x plus 6 there. So I'm going to write it in the same order as I wrote the first one, which is fine. And then when I multiply my last two terms, I'm going to have just the x minus 1 equals 49. I have a couple of like terms here. I have an x and an x here. I have a 6 and a minus 1. When I combine those together, I'm going to have a 2x plus 5. And these things right here are two like terms as well. So I have a 2 times <clears throat> square root of x plus 6 times the square root of x minus 1. And my right-hand side is still that 49. Notice here, I still have square roots here. And so what I'm going to try to do now is get everything on one side and my, leave my square roots over here so that I can square again to get rid of my x being under a radical. And so I'm going to subtract 2x and subtract 5 from both sides, and I'll be left with a square root of x plus 6, square root of x minus 1 equals 44 minus 2x. Again, I subtracted 2x, that gives me this negative 2x here, and I subtracted 5, 44, 49 minus 5 is 44. I'm going to also divide both sides by 2, just to save me a little bit of time and space here. When I subtract, uh, divide both sides by 2 here, I get square root of x plus 6 times the square root of x minus 1 equals 22 minus x. Now I'm ready to square both sides once again. And I will tell you, you could write these two under one radical. I just didn't here, but if you wanted to write this as x plus 6 times x minus 1 under a single radical, you could. I just kept it separate, just my preference here. It doesn't really matter to me what you do. But when I square these things, since there's a multiplication between them, uh, when I square, I'm going to get an x plus 6 times an x minus 1 equals a 22 minus an x quantity squared, right? I'm going to foil everything out. When I do that, I'm going to get x squared plus 5x minus 6 equals a 484 minus 44x plus x squared. Remember, you got a foil here. Okay? Now that I have that, I see that I have a quadratic equation. It looks like quadratic equations because I have an x squared here and an x squared here. But notice, if I subtract x squared from both sides, these two x squared terms are going to cancel. And so this is actually a linear equation. Um, 5x minus 6 equals 484 minus 44x. I'm going to pick my left-hand side for my x's to be on, which means I'm going to add 49 to both sides. Sorry, add 44 to both sides. When I add 44 to this 45, I'm going to get to 49x. And I'm, I'm going to also add 6 to both sides, and that'll give me a 490. All right, I'll divide both sides by 49, and I'm going to get that x equals 10, right? Again, what I've done here to help me solve this was to square both sides. Not only did I do it in this step right here, but once I squared it that first time, I still was left with a squared term. And so what I did here was I squared it again, right? Anytime we square both sides, we introduce some possible solutions or we change our equation because squaring both sides is not a property of equality. So what we need to do is go back to our original equation, plug in our value that we got. So I'll plug in 10 here and 10 here and see, that, see if I got a appropriate solution. When I plug in 10 here, I get the square root of 16, which is 4. When I plug in 10 here, I get the square root of 9, which is 3. And 4 plus 3 does equal 7. So my solution is 
X equals 10.